Okay, so, so what we need to do is we need to do a pre pre um, layout of the board. Not, not a layout, like a test run of the board. But let me explain. So this is the existing printed circuit board uh, that I have already had made. I've got the, the Gerber files for this, and I can make as many of these as I want uh, at a fab house. Uh, but now that I'm moving everything over to KiCad, I need I'm recreating this, and I have the like the the dimensions on a sheet of like the height and width. I don't have all of the like what this angle is right here and what this distance is, and it's kind of a weird shaped board. And the reason it's shaped like that is because I actually had a mold made for the case for these. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, I'll get a little bit of light there for the screen to go in. But anyway, the the board fits very nicely in to that case so that it does not move around like it's it's in there very tight and so what I need to do is I need to um, move it I need to recreate it in KiCad and so I literally had like my calipers out and I'm measuring these things and getting the the, the biggest and hardest part about this is the the standoff um, half circles there. Those need to be just right so that um, it'll fit correctly. And so let me see here. I seem to be redlining on volume. Hopefully the, the volume's okay. I don't know if I can turn that down a bit. Make that a little better. So <laughs> the process for doing this I don't want to lay this out completely and then find that it doesn't fit into the case that I've already, I don't want to redesign the case. I want to just use the case that I already have. And so I laid it out to what I think are the exact dimensions in KiCad, but I don't know. I even like you can print out, let me show you this. That's the, the printout of the one-to-one -one size. And so I like printed it out to see like how it would print out at a fab house and then you know I'm like lining it up like that to make sure that everything fits okay and so it seems to be the right size but what I don't want to do is do all of this layout send it off have it fabbed and assembled as a test run so the the process here is going to be do a run of like maybe five or ten make sure everything looks right everything works correctly with ESP32 module and then we can do larger runs, make tweaks, do another run if we need to, and then make larger runs. But we want to start out with a, you know, like a pilot run to make sure that everything works right. And before I even do a pilot run, which is going to run me probably several hundred dollars, and I'll share all that. That's that's all part of this to, to let you know kind of an inside look at the cost of doing this stuff. Before I spend that few hundred dollars, I want to make sure that I have made the dimensions uh, just right. Let me open up... Uh, the PCB here. So like this yellow outline that I've did that I've done that I've did. Let me hide all the layers and then show the edge cuts. So this right here. I want to make sure that that is exactly how it's supposed to be before I even do a pilot run. And I think I can do this for maybe like 30 or 40 bucks through Osh Park. If you've uh, never seen them, let me slide that window over here. Um, Osh Park, you know, it even says drag and drop your KiCad, EagleCad, or Zip Gerber files. And uh, what I was thinking, I don't want to wait too long for this, is they've got this Super Swift. So you get uh, prototype boards, but faster, three copies for $10 a square inch, ships in four to five business days, which is pretty good. They've even said on this, if you place the order on a Monday before like 11 a.m., that uh, you normally have it by Friday, which would be really cool. I just, I need to verify the dimensions of this before I go any further. Um, and so that's what we're gonna try. I, I calculated this board's about a little over three square inches, and so it should be about 30 or 40 bucks to do that um, through Osh Park. So Osh Park, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. So that's what we're doing, and I don't know, I guess technically I don't need to put anything on the board, so like I, I'm assuming I could just send 
the board outline like this and just say make it all copper or don't do anything to it just cut three of them out and send them back to me um, I could also use it to, to validate some of the footprints that I'm using and so I think that's what we're gonna try and do um, you're gonna bear with me I have never uh, done anything like this uh, and so let's let's figure it out that's what we're doing so um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off here and uh, hopefully the sound is okay like I said it keeps redlining and uh, I don't know Ho hopefully it's it sounds okay all right so let's go right monitor so what I don't want to do I think I am going to leave everything I, I said I was gonna start from scratch but I'm basically from scratch here like these components are grouped one of the cool things when I imported it and maybe you'll see that here in a minute is it groups them all by those hierarchical sheets that I showed you uh, in a previous stream and so I don't want to mess this up I'd like to to do it on a, a, a different one so let me let me show you so like right now in my project here I've got this main .kicad PCB. Um, I'd like to do it on its own separate copy so I don't screw anything up. So I think I can just come up here. Yeah, there we go. Save copy as. And then I'll save this as like pre-pilot. There we go. Uh, so we'll do that. Board copy to pre-pilot. Okay, great. And so now, okay, see, so we're not working in that one. So what we're going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this uh, discard changes. Okay, here we go, right here. I've got pre-pilot KiCad PCB. So let's open that one up. Ah, oh, okay, great. And now what I'm wondering is if I can get rid of all the components. Let me see if I can re-import them. I wonder if that's something I can do. Like, just delete. Oh, I lost half my board. Control-Z is a real lifesaver. So let's, let's do like that, maybe. Okay. Uh, not pad. No, I need to scroll in here. That, delete that, delete that, get rid of R13 down here. I guess we just hand delete all these. Um, and then I I think I can just let's get rid of that. Get rid of all these. Okay. Now we're down to just the board. Uh, I think, let me just, yep, looks like it, just the board. Okay, and now I, I think I can just load a netlist, keep existing symbol to footprint association, so yes, and I'm gonna select the main.net file. And okay, see it adds all the symbols and does everything, there's no, ooh, no errors, that's great. And then I think I just do update PCB, the changes made cannot be undone. I sure you want to update just to verify I'm working in my pre-pilot KiCad. So yes, error symbol not found in footprint. Oh, okay, I I fixed all these on the other ones. That's I don't need to worry about these errors for what we're trying to do right now. So close that. And what's really cool about this is I'm going to drop. Uh, let's slide over here. I'm going to drop these. What I thought was really cool is you'll notice that there's kind of a group of components right here, a group of components over here, right here, and right here. And as I suspected when I originally did this, um, let's come back out. You'll notice there's one, two, three, four, five groups. If we open the schematic, we've got one, two, three, four hierarchical sheets and then the main sheet. And so I think it's really cool that KiCad does that to where it drops the components in groups based on your hierarchical sheets. Um, it doesn't, just because you create it in a hierarchical sheet doesn't mean that the components would necessarily be together or near each other. In my case, that is true, however, like down here, you can see like all of these uh, components for the e-paper display, those all will be together on the PCB. They'll be near each other. And so it's kind of a nice thing to be able to like just come over here and be like, oh, let me grab all the display components and I'm going to put them like over on this side of the of the board. So so I guess what we want to do is we can validate like which of these footprints do I want to validate? I don't really care about 
all of the resistors and the capacitors, those are all going to be standard, like 0402, 06, 03, 08, 05, uh, and things like that. And so th those are, are going to be correct. Uh, one thing that I would like to validate is this guy right here. Hover over it, press M. Nope, not what I'm looking for. I want this one. Okay, come on now. Zoom in a little bit. It's this one I want. Oh, why can't I grab? I don't know why it's not letting me grab this part right here. There we go. Okay, so I do want to see if that uh, JST connector that I just grabbed out of the footprint library will work. Um, I believe all these other ones are going to be good. This 24-pin uh, connector actually is one that I am not sure. I'm going to hide the rat's nest for now. Over here on the side, this little button over here hides the rat nest. There we go. Uh, the USB connector. There was not a footprint for the exact part number that I'm using. Uh, so let's see if this just random one will work. See that on there? I'm, I'm sure the ESP32 one is probably right. Might be fun to stick it on there just to see what it looks like size-wise. This JTAG one, this tag connect, I think I'm going to use. I'm on the fence about that, but we'll, we'll toss that in. And I also want to see how big, like uh, I've got some buttons that I wonder if these switch footprints that I, I'm already using will work on. Uh, and then this one okay so really what we're going to do here i guess like again I, I pcb fab is not my strong suit there's so many different options and things that you can use and so just whatever the defaults are i'm going to use again all i really care about is that this outline is exactly what i need to be or if i need to make adjustments to it and again i printed it out and it looks to be exact but I don't know how, when you define this PCB edge, how it's actually going to get cut out, how close to this it gets cut out, and if there's a, what the tolerance is for that. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to delete all of this because we don't care. And then let's just situate uh, a few of these. They don't even need to be lined up, really. Like, let's come in close here. And like this when we get to the actual production we're going to want this to be centered right now it's not going to be notice how something that's really cool you see that how it says pcb edge right there and has that line and so that shows you like how the connector is supposed to be lined up just like that so we'll place it we'll place it there hey look at that i'm pretty close to the middle a little bit high i think but, and then this over here has a similar um thing but we're going to just put it, you know, right along the edge there. This connector over here ends up being, it's actually on the bottom. And so I think if you just do F, it flips it, sticks it on the, the back side. Uh, and then we want to rotate it because it's actually like this on the back side. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll just leave the, uh, the JTAG tag connect, you know, right here and make sure that that fits and stuff. Uh, let's see, we'll put it, oh, it doesn't matter, right there. And then I'll just move this switch up. Oh, come on, grab the component, there we go. Okay, and then now the big guy, the ESP32. Uh, a lot of these, when they're installed on the dev kits, they hang the antenna over the edge of the board. Mine's not. It's going to actually be like this. And you notice how it defines that keep out zone. That'll help us later on when we're doing the the layout. To The keep out is where you don't put any copper. That's what that means because it will affect the performance of the PCB antenna that's on the module. So uh, that looks good. And so now, like I said, those are probably the only parts I really care about having on there. I just, you know, for fun to see if they they validate to the correct size. I don't, I'm not even gonna draw any traces or anything here. Um, and to be honest, this is 
why we're sharing this. I, I don't really know how to go from here to an order at Osh or Osh Park. If anybody knows how to pronounce that, let me know. Osh or Osh. I'm a Capitals fan. TJ Oshi. I'm going to call it Osh Park. Um, okay, so again, I don't know if there's like a... Yeah, I'm not sure. One thing I would like to maybe try is to insert an image, like a silkscreen image, just to like know how to do that. I'm not sure if there's any option. Here's text. Add text on the graphic layer. Yeah, it'd be cool to be able to like slap an image in here. Add layer alignment. Is that like a fiducial? Red layers. Uh, I don't think anything over here is going to help us. Place. Um, I don't want to waste too much time trying to do that. I'll have to, you know who knows the answer to all questions it is Google. I'm on the other screen here. I'm going to say uh, image. Silk screen KiCad KiCad. Adding a logo to your KiCad PCB. Um, oh, there's like a camera icon. I don't. Nope, not seeing that. Uh, export as PNG or BMP. Oh, you have to convert it into, oh, okay, you need like a separate utility to do that. Okay, totally doable, not something I'm going to mess with right now. And so, I don't know, well, let's, let's just pull Osh Park over here and say, I want to do the Super Swift, or I'm sorry, I need to go back. And... And drag and drop your KiCad. Well, there we go. Let me just, let me just drag it. Um, let me find it. Stop feeder hardware. Okay, I wonder if I can just grab, drag like the PCB into it. This is, again, out of my... Oh, it created a whole new project file. Did that? Main.pro... Oh, prepilot.pro. It, it creates like its own project file that you can... Okay. I wonder if I drop that in. We're going to try and drop the, the PCB in first. Uploading your design. Okay, processing. Well, that seems promising. Let's see what happens. How awesome is that? We detected a two-layer board. Three boards will cost seventeen thirty-five. I mean, oh my goodness, that is. Oh, look at this. Um, did I not place the? No, I did place it. Why is it not showing up? Oh, you know what? I bet I didn't save it. Let's cancel. Let's cancel that. Come back over here. I think I before I drag, drag, drug, before I drug the, the tag connect part on, I don't think I saved it. So let's save it. And then let's let's do that again. Let's drop in the Oh man, if it is this simple, I gotta, my hat's off to, all right, I'm, I'm switching. It's Osh Park. I'm going to say Osh Park. It's open source hardware, so I, I don't, it's not like GIF or JIF where the first word stands for something. It's like open, Osh. Yep, I'm going to say, I'm back to Osh. Look at me, I'm all over the place. Osh Park, that's what we're calling it. Okay, yeah, there we go. See, now the, before it was off the screen there, it didn't know where to put it on the board. That's really cool. Like it just, that's my board. That's exactly it. Like just 
just that simple. That is crazy. Um, so let's see, board name pre-pilot. I'm just gonna say description dimension test of boardage. That's what we're doing here. 1735. Now, again, let's get the camera back on so I can talk to you. This is, 1735 is nothing. Like if I were to do an actual run of these, full layout, um, China, populate the boards, all the components, hundreds of dollars for the fab and assembly, and we're gonna get there, but if, if we were to do that and then find out that the, the, you know, where I put these holes in KiCad is off just a little bit and it won't fit into my case that I've already had designed, you know, I, I've got to rerun hundreds of dollars because of a half a millimeter or a millimeter. 1735, I don't want to do these all day long and do, you know, five batches of 1735, but... Uh, if I can do this, and if it fits perfectly, great, we validate it. And if it's not, we can make small adjustments and, and run another batch. And so, uh, let's look through this. Processing, Kikad processing includes redrawing your fill zones. Please verify any copper pores. I mean, like again, I don't have any pores. Uh, we'll get into that later. Two layer board, detected supported drilled slots. So, got these kind of... Um, oblong holes for the USB port. This looks great. Like, I don't know. Let's, let's continue. Just want to make as if you have it. I mean, the user experience for this is incredible. Like, great job, Osh Park. And the bottom of the board drills. Those, yep, those are my drill holes as white circles or dots. I'm not sure why there's a drill. Oh, they just got pads on top and bottom. They're not plated through hole. Okay, well, that doesn't really matter. Um, drills should show up as white circles or dots on a purple background. I mean, I guess. Bottom layer, yeah, okay, so it does. It's got the copper there. Did it show me the top layer? Board top, board bottom, bottom layer. Oh, top silk screen. It's gonna put all that silk screen in there for me. Cool. I wonder why there's this little edge over here. Interesting. Uh, that's my board outline. That's my bottom silk screen. My top solder mask, bottom solder mask, top layer. That all looks, I mean, it looks right. Again, all I really care about is the dimensions. Order. Okay. Um, two, I don't really care again what the copper is. Ooh, super swift service though. I do care about that. All right, so price goes up with super swift, but that's okay. Like again, uh, I, I don't want to wait a lot of time on this turnaround because I want to get it and get moving forward. So 34 bucks, that's fine. If I'm way off and I feel like I need another one, maybe I'll do the cheaper version. So, um, add-ons, teensy. Oh, like somebody else's board. Nope, don't care about that. Manufacture entirely, ships in four or five business days. Okay, so let's do a checkout, I guess. Okay, super service, they're gonna send me three of them. And I'm going to not fill out all my personal information. What i got to decide on is do I want to pay extra to get it here faster? Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to priority mail it. I'm just trying to spend all kinds of money. Um... So 40 bucks, we're gonna be about 40 bucks. When I say when I started, we started 30 to 40 bucks. So we're right where I said we were gonna be 40 bucks to do a dimension check on the board before we go through all the trouble of laying it out. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna drag this over. I'm not gonna fill out all my personal address and credit card information on the stream here. Uh, so that's it, cool. So that was great. That was really easy to just create a copy of the board from Maine. Um, I can open Maine back up and still got all my work. The board dimension is the same. And so that's great.
Perfect. So that's it. That's all we're going to do for today. I just wanted to uh, walk through that process. That that was incredibly simple uh, to upload a file to Osh Park and uh, get those. And hopefully in about a week's time, I'll be streaming. And instead of holding up a black version of this, I'll be holding up an Osh Park purple version. And double hope that it fits into that case and then we'll be ready to move on with the layout. What, what we're going to do in the meantime though is we are going to continue laying out on the board here um, and because all the general layout, if we need to make a change it's going to be a half millimeter, a millimeter here or there. The board general dimension is not going to change and so, excuse me, so if we need to make a tweak to it we can make the tweak, copy it over into here Man, I burp, sorry. Copy it into here, and then, you know, we, we might just have to adjust the edges a little bit component-wise, but it's not like we'll have to relay out the whole board just because we have to tweak the, the board outline a little bit. So, um, cool. That was, that was a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. So that's going to do it for today. Uh, next time, what we're going to do is we're going to get into more layout. I'm, I still almost... I'm going to say 95% of the components have proper footprints. Uh, some of them don't. Like I'm still not sure about the, the micro USB connector, um, the 24 pin connector. We might have to create some custom parts. And so we're going to look at that next time. Uh, that or laying, just physically laying out the board and how we do that. So uh, tune in. Uh, that's what's up next.